Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the cash receipts journal. And we're specifically going to look at the cash receipts journal when you have to take VAT or VAT into account. In our previous lessons, we looked at the cash receipts journal, but we looked at basic examples. So if you do not know what the cash receipts journal is, you do not know the format, or it's your first time looking at the video on cash receipts journal, I would encourage you to check out lesson one. You'll find it in the link in the description below, which will give you a good foundation before you get to this one here where VAT is accounted for. In that previous lesson, we did not take into account VAT, so we ignored VAT. But if you have a question where you have to take into account VAT, this lesson should greatly help you in knowing how to do that. So what is the cash receipts journal? Well, like we said in our previous lessons, this is a journal used to record all cash received by the entity during the period. This could be actual cash received, deposited into the entity's bank account, or electronic transfers. Okay, so whenever you have received cash or whenever you're receiving cash as a company, you will record it in the cash receipts journal. So it should be easy when you see a scenario where you are paying cash or someone bought something from you on credit and did not pay you. It should be easy for you to know that, oh, that does not go into the cash receipts journal. You're only concerned about you receiving money. Cash paid out or owed to the entity is not recorded in the cash receipts journal. So if you are paying out cash or a customer owes the entity money, you will not record it in the cash receipts journal unless you are receiving money from whatever source. I hope it's making sense. What is the format for the cash receipts journal specifically when you also have VAT and you have to take it into account? Well, here it is. We have an example here, Eldos Flowers. That's the name of the company. So you start by putting the name of the company and then you put the name of the journal that you are doing. In this lesson, we are looking at the cash receipts journal and you put the month that you are dealing with or the period that you are dealing with. So if you are dealing with December 2021, for instance, you will put December 2021. Okay, so that's the heading of the cash receipts journal, the name of the company, the name of the journal and the period for which the journal is prepared. And then you have the very first column here, the document number, and you'll usually be given the document number in your scenario. If you're not given document numbers, then you might have to create or you may create your own numbers in sequence let's say 0, 01 0, 02 0, 03 and so forth and then the day is obviously the day of the month if it's the first day of the month you'll put 0, 01 over there and then the details this is where you put the name of the person or the entity that is paying you or is bringing money into the business okay so if a customer paid you you'd put their name under details if another company is paying you you'd put their name under the details here if you are selling something on cash then you'd put here sales under the details okay and then the folio here like we mentioned in our previous lessons this is a cross reference code and it is usually a number or a combination of numbers and letters. And it is mainly for connecting two different records. So this is showing you where else it is found in another record or where it's taken to or where it's coming from. So we're not going to worry much about this one here when you're doing the cash receipts journal. And then we've got analysis of receipts. This is where you will put all the amounts for a specific day. And it's usually one amount. So if they say on the first day of the month, the owner deposited money into the business, then you'd put that amount there. But if you have more than one transaction in that specific day, you'd also put that amount under it. And under bank, this is where you'd put the exact same amount that is under the analysis of receipts. So let me mention basically, analysis of receipts, you're putting all the different amounts for that particular day. And for most examples, usually one transaction or one entry for a specific day. And you'll see now as we go through examples. But when you get to bank, you're adding all the amounts under analysis of receipts for that particular day and you're putting that amount under bank so let me give you an example so let's say on the first day of the month the owner deposited 10,000 rand and then on the very same day your customer that owed you money paid you 5,000 rand so under analysis of receipts you put the first 10,000 rand and then under it you'd also put the 5,000 rand for which the customer is paying you and then when you get to the bank you will add the two together 10,000 plus 5,000 and you put 15,000 under the bank column 
okay and that's if they both occur on the same day but if it's only one in one day let's say on the first day the owner deposited 10000 rand and that's the only transaction for the first day of the month then you just put 10000 rand here and under bank you'd also put 10000 rand but basically you can see it's very similar what you have to bear in mind is that whatever you have under analysis of receipt has to total what is under your bank column Okay, and then the debtors column. Now, this one here, we didn't have it in our first lesson because that was a basic lesson. We didn't have the debtors column. But the debtors column is where you are putting all the money that is paid to you by people who owed you. Very important. It's people that you sold to before on credit and they had not paid you and now they are paying you. You'd record that amount that they are paying you under the debtors column. The discount allowed, this is where you will put the discount that you issued to the person who is paying you. So if your data is paying you and you said you gave them 50 rand discount, that's where you'd put that 50 rand, for example. And then the sales column is where you record all your cash sales. So if you sold on cash, you'd record that amount under the sales column as well. And then this is where we have to also take into account VAT. And you can see there's a column for VAT with both debit and credit. So the VAT here is the VAT output and it's usually output. Why? Because output is what we owe to the revenue authority. Because if someone is paying me, if I made a sale and someone is paying me, I know I have to take the VAT on that amount that I'm being paid and pay it over to the revenue authority. And it usually put it on the credit side. Now, if you do not understand how VAT output works or how VAT output and VAT input works, we've done a lesson, a very basic lesson on VAT and how it works with transactions. You'll find it in the link in the description below as well but basically what you are saying here is that whenever you've made a sale you would record the vat amount on the credit side however if you've issued your customer discount for instance that means for that specific discount the vat on that discount you have to put it on the debit side because you don't owe the revenue authority for that specific amount because uh, you issued a discount to your customer okay you'll understand it much better as we go through the examples just now and then the sundry account well, you can see we have columns for debtors, discount allowed, and sales. If we don't have a column for a specific transaction or for a specific account, that is what will go into the sundry accounts. Like I said earlier on, let's say, for, for instance, that the owner invests 10,000 rand into the business. What is that? The account is called capital. And you can see we have no column for capital here. That means we're going to take that amount of 10,000 rand and put it here in the sundry account and put the details as capital. So what we are saying here is that if you do not have column for that specific account, you take it to the sundry account. That is as easy as it is. Now let's go through examples in applying what I've been explaining here and seeing how it works. Well, here is our example. We did this exact same example before in our previous lesson that I alluded to. And now we are applying VAT to show you how it works. We've also added one more transaction and you'll see how it applies, which is the one on the 30th of the month. We didn't have it in our previous lesson, but now we have it, okay? So what are we told here? We're told that the information given below was extracted from the records of Eldos Flowers. The business is registered as a VAT vendor, VAT, at a rate of 15% is included where applicable. Very important. It's where it's applicable. So you have to know where is VAT applicable and where is it not applicable. Record them in the cash receipts journal for December 2021. So we are doing the cash receipts journal for December 2021. And the name of the company is Eldos Flowers. So let's bring up our format. Here it is. It's Eldos Flowers. And the journal we are doing and we are asked to do this is the cash receipts journal and the month for which we are doing the journal is December 2021. Okay, so you always start with your heading that way. And then you can see here we already have our format from document all the way to sundry account. And I'm sure you'd also be given the format unless you're asked to create the format yourself. But this is how it looks. Now let's go and look at our transactions again and see how we do them. The first one here is that Benny B., the owner invested 30,000 rand in the business, issued receipt 010. That's quite easy. The owner invested money in the business. That means the business is receiving money. Money is coming to the account of the business. That goes into the cash receipts journal because we are receiving money. Now, we know that 
the document number is 010 as you can see we issued receipt 010 and we know the day is 01 okay it's day one of december so let's go ahead and do that we put here the document number 010 and it's day one and then what are the details well, we put the name of the person who invested the money into the business. Who did that? Well, let's go back. You can see here, Benny B, the owner. So we put the name of the owner, Benny B. And we've just done that here under details, Benny B. And then folio, we'll leave that out for now. And then we go to analysis of receipts. How much did he put into the business? Well, he put 30,000 rand. So we go ahead and put 30,000 rand under analysis of receipts. And we go to the bank account and put the exact same amount, 30,000 rand. And remember, that was the only transaction for the first day of the month. So we put under analysis of receipts, 30,000 and under bank, 30,000. Now, what is the account here? Well, the owner is investing in the business. So you have to identify what account that is. Well, it's capital, like I mentioned before, when I was talking about the example, the owner is investing money in the business, it's called capital. Now, if you do not know how to identify what account it is, we've done a lesson on that one as well. You'll find it in the link in the description below. But here you can see we do not have a column for capital. So what do we do? We take it to the sundry account. And again, I must say, there's no VAT on capital. If the owner is investing money into the business, well, it's not money that is received as a result of trading. This is the owner putting money in the business, so that is not applicable. So we go to the Sundry account, and we put 30,000 rand there. And then the details there is the account. Which account is it? It's capital, okay? And we've just completed the first one. I hope it was easy enough. If you looked at our very first lesson, you'll find this one would have been very easy to complete. Now that we are done with the very first one, we will highlight it just to show that we are done with it. And you can tick yours on the side just to make sure you know that you've done this one here or use a highlighter. But I like to highlight whichever one we are done with. So we're done with the first one. So we highlight that one. Let's go to the second one. Number two, pay the month's rent by check 3000 rand check number 01 was issued so what did we do here we paid the month's rent by check does it go into the cash receipts journal it certainly doesn't go into the cash receipts journal because we are not receiving money this is money that we are paying out and remember whenever you're paying out that would be cash payments journal by the way you'll find it in the link in the description below where we've done a lesson on the cash payments journal so we are not Receiving money, we are paying money, so this one here we will skip because it does not go into the cash receipts journal. So let me highlight it in a different color. And then the third, bought inventory from Ego Capital by check 2500, check 02. So this one here should be quite easy as well. It does not go into the cash receipts journal because you're not receiving money, but you are paying it out. So you bought inventory using a check. So let's highlight it again. Received rent from a tenant. King Wave Limited 1500 receipt 011. Now, here we are receiving money, so it goes into the cash receipts journal. So, our day is day 06, and our document number is receipt 011. So, let's go ahead and do that. Our document number 011, and our day here is day 06. Now, what is the detail? Well, the question we ask ourselves is who brought the money into the business well it's the client what's his name it's king wave as you can see here king wave limited is the one who paid 1500 so we put the king wave limited okay and then analysis of receipt to put the amount that we received we received 1500 so you put it there in the analysis of receipts and under bank you put the exact same amount 1500 and then it doesn't go into the debtors doesn't go into the discount allowed it's not a sale now the question is is that applicable on this particular example? Well, here's a very important note for you to see. You can see here that the tenant is a company, King Wave Limited. Here's what you need to take note of. If the rental is for a residential property, there is no VAT as it is an exempt supply. However, if the rental is for a commercial property, VAT is applicable. What are we saying here? If you are renting from someone or someone is renting from you for residential purposes, i.e. where people stay or where people live, then that is not applicable because it's an exempt supply. But if the rental is for a commercial property, meaning that someone is renting it for the purposes of doing business, then that is applicable. And we see here King Wave Limited is 
a business that means it's probably renting for the sake of doing business so we have to put the vat because it's applicable on this particular one so we calculate the vat remember the tenant paid 1500 rent so we have to calculate vat now we've done lessons on how to calculate vat before and you'll find them in the links in the description below as well so how do we calculate vat on this one well remember if you paid us 1500 that 1500 already has vat in it and we know that our vet rate is 15 percent as we saw in the question vet at 15 percent is applied so we're going to take the 1500 times 15 divided by 115 why 15 well because 15 percent is the vat so we want the vat of 15 percent and we divide that by 115 why 115 well 100 percent is the amount excluding vat but if it's including vat it's the 100 percent plus the 15 percent of vat it's 115 percent so it's 1500 times 15 divided by 115 i hope it's not confusing if it is check out that lesson where we showed how to calculate percentages or how to calculate VAT when it's inclusive or exclusive. And the amount is 195 Rand 65 cents. So we're going to put that under VAT output credit side. So we'll put it on the credit side because that portion of VAT, 195 Rand 65 cents, we will have to pay it over to the revenue authority. Okay. Now that we have that one day, we need to go to the Sandri account because you can see here we have no column for rent. So what are we going to put under Sandri account? We're going to put the amount for rentals. And we're going to put that amount excluding VAT. Okay, the rent amount does not include VAT. So how do we calculate that? We take the same 1,500 times 100 divided by 115 and it gives us 1,304 rent. 35 cents another way you could have done it is just by taking 1500 minus the one you had calculated of 195.65 and it's going to give you the 1304 and 35 cents so we're going to put it under sundry accounts under amount 1304 rand 35 cents and the details there is the account which is the rent income okay you put the rent income Okay, now we have just completed the second one. So we'll go ahead and highlight it because we've just done that one. Let's look at the one on the eighth. We're told here that we paid insurance by check 1,200. That's easy. We paid here. So it does not go into the cash receipts journal. So we will have to leave that one out. So we highlight it. On the ninth, we sold inventory on credit to Jim James 500 rent again here we sold inventory but we didn't sell it on cash we sold it on credit meaning we have not received any money yet so it does not go into the cash receipts journal so we're going to skip that one because it does not go into this particular journal here if you'd like to check which journal it goes into you'll find the link to the lesson where we have done it on the sales journal as well as the data's journal in the description below okay so we highlight that one there and then on the 10th, we bought inventory on credit from Ego Capital 3000 Rand. Well, here we bought inventory, so we're not receiving money. And even if money was involved here, we bought it on credit, meaning we had not paid it yet. So it does not go into the cash receipts journal. So we highlight that one as well. And then on the 14th, inventory was sold for cash as per receipt 012, 12,000 Rand. Here, we received money because we sold inventory on cash. So our day is day 14 and the document number is 012 so let's go ahead and do that day 14 and 012 as the document number and we sold inventory on cash here so what is our detail going to be well it's going to be sales as you can see here inventory was sold for cash so we put our details as sales and then analysis of receipts is how much we sold it for we sold it for 12,000 rand as you can see here inventory was sold for cash 12,000 rand so we put 12,000 rand under analysis of receipts and under bank we put the exact same amount of 12,000 rand now again whenever you make a sale of inventory or stock or merchandise then you will have to take into account vet if vet is not ignored like in our previous example or we didn't take vet into account but you always take vat into account if they're telling you that should be applied where applicable whenever you make a sale of inventory or stock or merchandise they're all the same thing then you will have to apply vat so we have a column for sales here as you can see here so whenever you make a sale on cash you will always put it under the sales column as well but 
the amount you're going to put under the sale column must exclude VAT. So what is the amount excluding VAT? Well, it's the 12,000 Rand multiplied by 100% divided by the 115 percent remember 115 percent is the including vat but the 100 percent is excluding vat so it's 12,000 times 100 divided by 115 it gives us 10,434 and 78 cents that is the sales amount excluding vat so we'll put it under sales and then we'll go to vet output we're going to put it on the credit side whenever you make a sale you put it on the credit side because you will have to take that money or that portion of vat and pay it over to the revenue authority so we're going to take the twelve thousand rand minus ten thousand four hundred thirty four rand seventy eight cents and you'll get your vat or otherwise you can use the formula twelve thousand rand times fifteen divided by one one five and you get one thousand five hundred sixty five rand twenty two cents which is our vet output you put it on the credit side so we'll go ahead and do that one there and we've just completed that particular transaction so let's go ahead and highlight that one now on the 18th we paid wages by check 1800 what i'd like you to do here is to pause the question like i always say and attempt to finish the remaining transactions on your own and fill it into your cash receipts journal it will help you greatly engaging your understanding of the work that we are doing here and also be able to highlight areas where you are probably making mistakes or you do not understand so go ahead and pause and try it on your own and then you can continue the video and compare your answers to mine and see how you did okay i hope you have attempted the question and we can now continue on the 18th, paid wages by check, 1,800. Well, if you attempted the question, I hope you left that one out because we paid wages here. If you are paying money out, then you know it's not cash receipts journal, it's cash payments journal. So we leave that one out, so let's highlight it. And then on the 21st of the month, borrowed 15,000 rand from Mula Bank and deposited the check, receipt 013. What happened here? So we took out a loan from the bank. And we put the money into the business bank account. So we are receiving money. So we have to put it into the cash receipts journal. So it's day 21 and it's receipt 013. And obviously our details is going to be the name of the bank, Mula Bank. So we go ahead and do that. Document number 013 as we're told. And the day is day 21. And the details is Mula Bank because that's who gave us the money or borrowed us the money. Analysis of receipts. Is how much we received from the bank as you can see here it's fifteen thousand rand so we put it under analysis of receipts and the bank you put the exact same amount fifteen thousand rand and then here it was a bank loan because we borrowed from the bank and we do not have a column for a bank loan here so what do we do we take it to the sundry account if you attempted the question on your own I hope you can see where you got it correctly and where you didn't get it correctly so you take it the sundry account because you have no column for bank loan so we put the amount there 15,000 rand under sundry account and then the detail there is the loan okay loan from mula bank or loan mula bank or you could have written bank loan it would all be correct okay i hope you got that one correct so let's go back and highlight that one as you have just done it on the 23rd bought equipment from chiltree by check 7,000 rand what happened here you bought equipment okay so whenever you see the word bought or paid you know it doesn't go into the cash receipts journal because you're not receiving money so let's highlight that one as well and then the very last one jim james a debtor settled his account and received 10 percent discount receipt 014 okay so what happened here we are told that a debtor who's called jim james settled his account and received 10 percent discount receipt 014 now whenever you have a transaction like this one here it's actually quite easy a lot of students struggle for some reason how on how to do this one here but let me show you whenever you see the name of the data jim james you go back through your transactions and see if there's any other transaction that you had with this particular data and if you go back you'll see that on the 9th we sold inventory on credit to jim james 500 rand now if you look at our first lesson this one would be pretty easy because we sold inventory on credit to Jim James for 500 Rand. So we sold inventory to him on credit for 500 Rand. That means Jim James owed us 500 Rand. Now we get to the 30th. This guy, the same person, the same data paid us 
by settling his account okay so he settled his account and he received 10 percent discount it's very important that they said settled his account because if he settled his account that means it doesn't owe us anymore but what did we do we gave him a 10 percent discount so we have to calculate what that 10 percent discount is in your example or in other examples they might give you the discount they might say he settled his account and you gave him let's say 50 rand discount that's quite easy but here they told us we gave him a 10 percent discount so if we gave him a 10 percent discount that means how much did he pay us well he only paid us 90 percent because if you gave him 10 percent we are only receiving 90%. So let's calculate what that 90% is. We're going to take the 500 rand which he owed us times 90 divided by 100. And we know that we actually received 450 rand. So if we received 450 rand, that means the discount we gave him is 50 rand. You could have also done that by taking 500 times 10%, which is the discount we gave him. And you'll see that the discount is actually 50 rand. Okay, so let's go ahead and record that. We know that we received in our bank 450 rand so it's day 30 and the receipt number or the document number is 014 let's do that it's 014 document number and the day is 30 and once we put our document number and our day what is the detail well the detail is the person who's bringing money into the business and there is our data who is he well it's jim james as you can see here so we'll go back and put the jim james under the details and then analysis of receipts how much we actually received remember we didn't receive the full 500 rand we received 450 because we gave him a discount so we're going to put 450 under analysis of receipt and 450 under the bank account now we have a debtors column here that is what it's for when a debtor is paying you you put it under the debtors column so we're going to put there and how much are we going to put under debtors column well it's not going to be 450 so if you put 450 you'd be incorrect because you're saying that he's only paying you 450 or he's only settling 450 but if we gave him a discount he settled the full amount that he owed us how much did he owe us he owed us 500 rand so we're going to put the 500 rand very important you put the full amount that he owed you under the debtors column not just how much you received as a business okay and then the next thing that we do there, we'll go to the discount allowed column. How much is, are we going to put there? Well, if you think 50 rand, you'd be correct only if the VAT was not applicable. But VAT is applicable here. So what does it mean? Well, VAT should be removed from the discount. Meaning we have to take out the VAT from the discount because whenever you issue a customer a discount Remember initially when you sell to the customer you'll have accounted for VAT and recorded that you're going to owe the revenue authority But now that you've issued a discount to a customer you have to take out the VAT from the discount Telling the revenue authority that listen I gave this guy a discount that means for the portion of the discount I do not owe you the VAT on that amount so we're going to put it on the debit side of the VAT output column. So again, we had calculated here, 500 times 90 divided by 100 gives us the amount we actually received, but we know that the discount with the VAT is 500 times 10 divided by 100, it gives us 50 rand. That is how much discount we issued the customer. But we know in this 50 rand, we also have VAT in it. So we have to remove the VAT. Now do we do that? Well, we're going to take the 50 rand times 100 divided by 115. And that gives us 43 rand 48 cents. That is the discount amount excluding the VAT. So we're going to put that under the discount column. Don't be confused. Once you've calculated your discount, you know that it already has VAT in it. You have to remove the VAT from that one there. That is if you're told to take into account VAT in your particular question. So if the discount excluding VAT is for the 3 and 48 cents, that means our VAT on the discount was the 50 rand times 15 divided by 115 and it's 6 rand 52 cents. Okay, once we have that, under the discount column, we're going to put the 43 rand 48 cents as we have just done here. And then under the VAT output column, we're going to put on the debit side this time, which is good for the company because we are saying since we gave this guy a discount, we're not going to pay the revenue authority, the VAT on that particular discount. Okay, so the 6 rand 52 cents, put it on the debit side as we have just done. And we are done for that particular one. So let's go back. 
We've just completed the last one, so let's highlight it. And you can see we have done all our transactions. I hope it's made sense. I hope it's been making sense and how to account for VAT. Now that we have completed it, we just have to go back and put our totals. So we create a row for the totals and we put the totals for each column. Okay, from analysis of receipts, the bank, debtors, discount allowed, sales, and VAT, as well as sundry account. Okay. And obviously, the total for analysis of receipts has to be exactly the same as the totals for your bank account. And you can see here it's the same. If it's not the same, you've done something wrong somewhere. And now we have just completed the cash receipts journal after taking into account VAT. I hope it's made sense. I hope you have gained value from this lesson. I hope it was clear enough and you know how to do the cash receipts journal whenever you have VAT. If it has made sense, if you've gained value from this lesson, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share it to those you think it might help. Till next time, cheers.